Hello there everyone and welcome back to Casa Redux. I'm your host, Mr. National Populous Lover, but we gotta read about the 20th anniversary of Our Lady of Fatima. Exactly 20 years ago today, in 1917. In the small little Portuguese village of Fatima, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to three shepherd children over the course of five months. In these visitations, the Virgin would share with the children everything from visions of heck to prophecies of the future. One of these prophecies foretold the fall of the eldest daughter of the church, friends to the cynicalist menace. In the same vision, the mother of God warned that unless the Holy Father, in union with all bishops of the world, consecrated friends to her immaculate heart, the heirs of friends would be spread throughout the world. In the twenty years since these alleged visages of the mother of God, all that she had foretold had come to pass. From the rise of the commune to the spreading of cynicalism throughout the world by the agents of the Red France, not a word spoken has of yet been untrue. With this being the case, Our Lady of Fatima has gathered quite the cult following among the exiled populace. Following her request to do penance and pray the rosary daily, several legions of Mary have formed around the nation dedicated to spreading both the rosary and the message of Fatima. Along with this, bishops and archbishops whom follow us into exile formed a small grouping that yearly asks the Holy Father to make the consecration, but this has as yet to occur. Regardless, the 13th of May each year is home to great festivals, festivals and most solemn prayer to Our Lady, asking her to do all in her power to help us return home when the time is right. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Whereas the time has come to make good Our Lady's request, the have Pius the Twelfth consecrate France. Wait, what's the difference? Pray for us. Well, maybe we should go with more political power. We're supporting the Pacific government right now. We can send more volunteers, which you might want to do, but we're no, not necessarily a national populace. So, have Pius the Twelfth consecrate France. Uh, we'll see. News from Corsica. This morning, a war memorial containing soy from the mainland was inaugurated on the beach in Ajaccio. It was dedicated to the land or tens of thousands of Corsicans who gave their lives to France during the Valkyrie and subsequent civil war. Since the revolution, the island has been an incredibly important bastion for us indeed. It is so close to the commune that its shores can be seen on a clear day while Red Italy is not far away either. As such, it has become a focal point for the Mediterranean strategy of the Entente, having quickly been transformed into a major naval and air base from which our ships patrol as close as possible to the mainland, which tends face-offs with the international ships occurring every other week. Any liberation effort would have to start here. And much of the intelligence and reconnaissance work done in France and Italy is coordinated from Bastia and Ajaccio. It's also there that the first waves of exiles landed, and though most moved on Algeria, many stayed, creating a population and economic boost that paired with the military buildup. As you vitalize the island, despite perpetual tension as war looms, though there's no longer a stream of refugees like in the early days of the commune, there's still a constant trickle of dissidents making their way to our shores, each given a hero's welcome but carefully interrogated. Finally, uh, organized crime, already an issue before the war, became a mainstay of the island life. Many destitute veterans and refugees started to crime in the presence of so many soldiers, many gambling, prostitution, booming businesses, and the Corsican Mafia under the leadership of men like Paul the Emperor Carbone, himself a veteran, further thrived in the smuggling of goods and people in and out of the metropole. The authorities have returned a blind eye to this, as the Mafia has proved to be an incredibly useful network of informants within the commune, all the while attending to the baser needs of infantrymen and officers alike. What a lovely island! As we're currently doing the Ministry of Naval Affairs, of course, um, like we read last time, so we read that again, please go right ahead. Um, and the Eternal Enemy, of course. Uh, all right, again, I got some too, so if you want to do that too, please go ahead. And I've actually read all these, so we're just kind of reading all the ones uh, that uh, we're just kind of waiting to get these all done, which is fine. Baton, oh, baton, and total sacrifice, of course. Just going to be reading all this extra equipment and legionary idealism. Murder rocks the Casbah. As he was on his way to the city of Ramadan Mosque, the great Mufti of Algiers, Mahoumed Bendali, was surrounded by two men and stabbed in the heart, dying on the spot. The two perpetrators were caught after quick investigation confessed to the murder, justifying their actions by saying the Mufti had acted against the Islamic faith and was little more than a puppet of the infidels. Appointed by the colonial authorities first as an imam, then a Mufti. Unpopular and frequently brazenly critical of even mild reformist talk, Ben Dali had many powerful enemies. After a interrogation session, the murderer confessed to merely being a pawn in a greater scheme, offering thousands of, offered thousands of francs to kill the imam by the true mastermind behind the crime, a prominent member of the reformist association of Algerian Muslim ulema, Tayyib al okabi Already banned from preaching in mosques by colonial authorities, the man had been under police surveillance for some time, suspected of conspiring against the state under the pretense of religious reform. He was immediately arrested in his awaiting trial, however. Many Algerians and some freshmen believe this is a conspiracy, and that El Akbi was falsely impl implicated in this affair by colonial police eager to have such an inconvenience disappear. Whether that accusation is true or not, this case is quickly turning into an embarrassment. We could drop charges against El Akbi, Akbi somewhat losing face but preventing any further unrest and possibly getting an ally within the association, or we could keep him in jail, getting rid of a prominent and indignant leader, and sowing dissent among the Alemas. Can't let him run free? It's only 1% stability. I don't want to lose any more political power. Le Proletariat. Henri Count of Paris has published Le Proletariat, a short historical and political essay on the working classes. In this essay, the air traces back the origins of the poor, uh, working, working and living conditions of the proletariat to the revolution of 1789. 
uh, bourgeois coup that he claims turned the proud artisans of farmers of old into proletarians by destroying traditional structures such as guilds and enabling economic liberalism. He chronicles a slow descent into indignity of the working classes over the last century and a half, caused by usurious industrial capitalism and new illegitimate elites culminating in the 1919 revolution, an event that he considers engineered by nefarious forces exploiting the legitimate grievances of the masses. Prince Henri then makes a passionate case for the monarchy, the only regime he claims would truly restore the dignity of the people by upholding tradition and the social doctrine of the church. The work was so received and sold well thanks to the tireless promotion by the Action Francaise and the praise by influential clergy, already being translated into multiple languages and published abroad, although some were shocked by the violence of Henry's denunciation of capitalism and the bourgeoisie. Garcia has even received praise, sometimes genuine but mostly amused, from the commune. Maybe it should be nicknamed the Red Count? Industrial Pushkman. Now that we've submitted the market to our will, it's time to use it wisely. Great work, such as in the civil and military fields, as in the naval field. We undertake by the great master in order to transform our overseas positions in industrialized territories worthy of our metropole occupied by the communards. Nice. Colonial pacification. As in Paris, Marseille, Strasbourg, or Brussels are once vast colonial empires in an integral part of a Greek country. Our father, forefathers having fought valiantly under the tricolor to earn these resourceful lands. The natives don't seem to understand this reality. They are here in our country, not theirs, on our French lands. It's time to remind them of this fundamental lesson and to make sure they get in their heads once and for all, one way or another. And the beautiful war, which we'll do eventually, because I don't want to go to war with them just yet, though, but we are ready. Eventually. After long and costly preparations have required a lot of hard work from a grandmaster, Joseph Darnan. Everything is ready to launch a crusade that will bring us home. The commune are dogs who defend themselves, but our proud and strong legionnaires will beat them just as we crush the reds of the Paris commune in 1870. Onwards, the only true French will triumph. And that means we go to war, modify the idealism, which is not bad. More manpower, stability, command power, but embrace maneuver warfare. Himself a tank officer, de Gaulle has claimed for years that tanks represent the future of warfare. With the breakthroughs they achieved during the Great War, particularly the Somme, demonstrating their ability to rapidly smash through enemy lines before the enemy can form a clear response. With tank technology having greatly improved since then, we can expand our armored units and increase our investments in tank production. A professional army. General de Gaulle has long argued that given the circumstances of our exile, it would be a pointless attempt to raise a large army, and we must extend or instead, make the most of what manpower we have. By cutting manpower quotas for the army while shifting funds from recruitment to training, we can create a small but highly professional well-trained army. Of course, we read this one last time, too. Um, if you want to read that again, please go ahead. But, um, trade with the Entente. The castle of the revolution and exile left us with precious few allies compared to the vast coalition that had challenged Germany during the Great War. However, let's consolidate our ties with those allies that we do have and reach out to our fellow Entente nations for increased economic cooperation with mutually beneficial trade deals and investments alongside a fresh effort to attract investments from these countries. Maghreb shipbuilding. Without a strong and well-equipped navy, we have no hope of liberating France and such we badly need ships. With this in mind, the government will should subsidize shipbuilding in the Mediterranean coastline of North Africa and invest further into naval research. Something in French, something excellent in French. I don't know. With tensions escalating even further, it's hardly surprising that pop of culture in a country would reflect that fact. And either latest song dropped from the charts in France is called They Make Excellent Frenchmen, performed by Maurice Chevalier. Star of the musical comedy and kingpin of French show business. The song lists all the characteristics of a group of soldiers and officers, all coming from different walks of life and all in different occupations, many middle aged with families of their own or differing faith, races, and political opinions, all of their own little ailments, and yet, as the chorus states, all of them make fr excellent Frenchmen excellent soldiers. Catch and comedic. It's a, so it's a song's underlying call for unity as their nation is faced with its greatest struggle yet and its exaltation of the French infantryman. Always ready to leave everything behind and forget himself in the fight and defend his motherland that has made him its, made its immense success. A nation where everything is mobilized for the common war effort like ours, each and every one of us can identify with this sentiment. We'll fight and win because that may, we must take our homeland. They march and step, they're no longer used to it, but it's like riding a bicycle. You never forget. Well, we'll see. We still gotta do these two, do these two. Um, speed, more fuel consumption, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Artillery improvements is not too bad. Special forces, not bad either. I do want to do this stuff, but you know, the Red Flood, if you're that, please go right ahead. It's 1938, a world class navy. You get a whole dockyard. Total air war, night operations, production, that would be bad. Production's pretty nice to get, actually. Um, world class navy, and most of the French navy company are government in exile in North Africa. Such our navy is large, but many of our ships are all dated. In its current state, the navy could defend our shores, but it's uncertain how well it would fare if someone were to attempt to contest their hold in the Western Mediterranean. Let's try for a large scale overhaul. Total air war. Many of your younger generations of officers argue for the large-scale use of air support for the infantry, but others have also suggested that we should not shy away from using our airports to destroy enemy infrastructure and industry in a more generalized manner. We're not in a position to avoid total war, and turning the enemy's resources to rubble can only help us. The Night Monks of St. Crow. In heights above Oran, stand a citadel built centuries ago by the Spaniards, the fort of St. Crow. Taken over and restored after the conquest of Algeria. Uh, their foe was recently a secondary garrison. However, the steepy, sleepy citadel has been bustling with activity for the past few months. A school was created there by the regime to educate the future elites of the nation. Under the leadership of Lieutenant Pierre Dunyard de Sesgonzac, a young and fiery officer, and René de Naroy, 
Uh, military chaplain beloved by his men, the National School of Cadre of Orans created an innovative six-month curriculum to shape hundreds of the brightest youths into the nation and the leaders worthy of serving France. With strict discipline, exemplary morality, strenuous physical exercise inspired by the scoutism and military training, long hours of study, and a deep sense of camaraderie, Lieutenant Donoyer de Segonac Zac obscured a new man entirely dedicated to national interests. So, interestingly, the students in the retreat between sea and sky began to shape the spirit of the school themselves, nicknaming Donoyer de Segonzac. Old chief, although the man is barely 30, they have styled themselves as a knightly order, with a motto and coat of arms, swearing an oath to France and the comrades. A development embraced by the direction of the school as a romantic image of that school brings ever more volunteers. However, St. Crow's independence is worrying with some within the government. While others consider the school to be a slowly but surely into a personality called around the old chief. If not a cult, plain and simple, given the increasingly mystical Catholic devotion fostered by Padre de Noé, what should be done? Encourage them? Stability. Shut down the school, our best and brightest will not be turned into cultists. I can see what happens Algerian about. Muslim scouts. In 1935, a scouting troop for Muslim boys was created by Mohamed Bora, supported by reformers Olemos, traditional elites, and reform minded Frenchmen, all hoping that scouting would promote physical and moral education, character building, and sense of responsibility, as well as a duty to Allah and the motherland. Hundreds of troops have been created since, proving popular among all classes as many young boys and teenagers flock to them. Drawn by promises of adventure, a sense of belonging, as well as dashing uniforms with red and green bandanas, a drawing from Lord Baden Powell's books. The boys learn how to camp, survive, sing songs, participate in religious ceremonies like Eid or Malwid, where the people uh, they parade in uniform, the groups even organizing a mass kitan, circumcision of boys around seven years old, an occasion of much celebration that poor families could otherwise not afford. However, these groups have remained largely isolated from each other, merely sharing values of flagging in a uniform. <clears throat> As such, representatives from the various troops have asked colonial administration its blessing to create a federation of Algerian Muslim scouts that would permit greater cooperation and uniformization of scouting practices among the indig indigenous. Already prominent native voices like Farhat Abbas and a diverse coalition of French reformists campaign for the official approval of such a federation, arguing that they promote traditional values along with their loyalty to France, while some more conservative Piet Noirs argue that the Boy Scouts are groomed for red-green jihad by the syndicalist agents of Nesali Hajj, that native scouting is a bad idea altogether, and that the part uh, patri, they are loyal to is not France, but Algeria. More pragmatic voices of the government argue that giving approval to this federation would grant us much greater oversight of a largely autonomous initiative. Your blessing is going to be a good thing? Be more... More like, be prepared for insurrection. Ban these groups. Well, I want more national populism, so... We'll see what they do in the end. Sombra de Mancha. Gloomy Sunday is a melancholic, melancholic song telling the sinister story of a spurned lover who committed suicide. Addressing from beyond the grave, the man who left her. Composed by Hungarian exile in the commune in 1935. Uh, the song made its way across the world, first becoming a mainstay of CD concert halls and cabarets before reaching mainstream audiences when it was first recorded in French by the popular singer Damio. In these trying times, it's hard to surprise when the peoples of Europe and beyond are prone to melancholy, however. Rumors have been circulating about the song that is linked with an ever-increasing number of suicides in France, the U.S., and the composer so not hungry. And then merely listening to the tune can push them even to cheers individuals towards suicidal ideation. Uh, whether this is a fact, a mere urban rumor, or a clever marketing campaign, the song's already been banned from airing on the radio or even being sung publicly in more than a few countries, which only adds to the incredibility of rumors about the now infamous Hungarian suicide song. Here, too, a debate has raged on the question of a potential ban and almost welcome break from the unusual uh, political fracas. But is it time for the government to act? What should be done? Ban the song. Clearly, we had a message somewhere. Or we wasted time to dismiss the rumors. Manpower? Uh... Yes, but we do have get enough political power. Also, I did do this one. National Army Program, just because it gives a research slot. I didn't realize it gives more research slots, so that's really strong. Our need for military industry is greater than ever, and as such, it is now vital that we redouble our efforts and investments in arms factories and subsidies for armaments, encouraging both private business and state interests to do their bit for the military economy, and introducing greater rationing in order to save resources for the military. Supply and the liberation? As we push further into the commune, we only need more and more equipment to sustain the liberation campaign. Hence, the state must go even further in its investment in the army, securing the safety of our forces, supply lines, and the quality and quantity of the equipment. No matter how tightly the economy has already been squeezed, more is always needed. Subsidize plain production. The communard forces far outnumber our own, and such will need a domination of the skies in order to push them back. And also protect our Mediterranean supply lines. As such, we should greatly extend our subsidies for planes, making a great effort to encourage manufacturers to produce higher qualities of the latest models. Charles de Batel. Batel. Although strong armored units are essential to the de Gaulle's vision, our own technology production capacity falls far short of what would need to be sustained the tank divisions envisaged by the Chief of Staff. As such, we should redirect funding away from the Navy and from the recruitment campaign, support a new research and development for tanks, and increase subsidies for that production. Artillery improvements. Although tanks are central to de Gaulle's plan, they can only be in one place at one time, and as such, capable infantry units are needed to cover a broader front. The Great War showed that strong artillery is the only way to prevent infantry from being bogged down in attrition, and thus we shall expand our our artillery units and further develop tactics for shelling of enemy forces. And we're going to keep going with, uh, get rid of these more arms. Go with arms. Expand special forces. A major aspect of professionalizing the army is a shift towards specialized elite units. 
such as Marines and Mountaineers. Different units will receive in-depth tra specialized training in order to be exceptionally well suited for specific operations and circumstances. Meanwhile, the establishment of a new Marine program will help our efforts to land in the Metropole and reduce the influence of And the Navy. even though we're just kind of hanging out for the most part, we did help join the war with Canada to fight the CSA for funsies. Uh, but we did uh, strengthen officer autonomy. Provided that it's capable and well trained, the officer on the ground will be the best judge on how to act in battle. That's failure to the generals away in their chateau during the Great War proof. As such, we should ensure that our officers are highly capable and be just trusted to take dynamic action and empower them to do just that. Rapid breakthroughs. If tank units can punch through enemy lines quickly enough, it is essential that they keep going as far as they can. To quickly secure strategic locations to throw enemy forces into chaos. Our newly expanded armored units will thus be trained in rapidly breaking past enemy defenses, and tank commanders will be instructed in how to best exploit those holes in enemy lines. Subordinate the Navy. In the current circumstance, we have little need for a colossal navy capable of dominating large oceans when all we need is to be able to cross the Mediterranean Sea. So far, though, the Navy has refused to acknowledge this, with Admiral Darnan still demanding needless funds for his worthless projects. It's time to put, away the navy, put the Navy in its place, and ensure that it cannot act without the proof of the Chief of Staff. Air support. A large air force needed to disrupt enemy supply lines and break up enemy units, something that will greatly assist our armored breakthroughs. As such, de Gaulle has authorized new funds for the Air Force, which will be encouraged to focus on close air support and dive bombing tactics, supported by de Gaulle in exchange for distancing itself from the Darlan, from Darlan in the Navy. Armored advancements. Our current tank models continue to fall. <clears throat> Far beyond those needed for the all swift defenses. And although those theories are widely accepted, many officers still lack the experience to command tanks in battle. Thus, we should invest further in the development of new tank models and give far more officers excessive training in armored warfare. Spinal liberation. Uh, I'm not sure if I read this earlier, but as we push further into the common, we only need more and more equipment to sustain the liberation campaign. Hence, the same must go in further in its development. Uh, or in its investments in the army, securing the safety of our forces, supply lines, and quality and quantity of their equipment. No matter how tightly the economy has already been squeezed, more is always needed. And Pierre de Coubertin dies. Uh, Pierre de Coubertin, born in 1863, a store and educator and journalist, founded the International Olympic Committee, has died of a heart attack at the age of 74 years of age. Um, born in a royalist family but rallied to the Republic, he turned down the opportunity to form a military career and instead dedicated his life to pedagogy and sports, himself a proficient athlete, promoting the integration of physical acti activity and education. But de Coubertin had an even greater objective. Popularized sports by internationalizing them and for them to become an instrument of peace and greater understanding between the peoples through peaceful co competition and sportsmanship. Hoping for this utopian goal, de Coubertin turned to Alexander ancient Greece and her Panhellenic Pan -Hellenic Games and the first Olympics in almost two millennia took place in 1894 in Athens. But even though born Olympics couldn't prevent the madness of the Great War and following the revolution, the Baron had a fleet of Algeria like so many others. Already heartbroken by the death of the front of two nephews, the diplomatic blunder of the 1924 Berlin Olympics that neither France attended. And the subsequent establishment of the Spartacades left de, Cooper and de Cooperton a broken shoulder man. His dream crumbling before his eyes. Following the announcement of his death, the government nonetheless put out a statement praising him, and the Greek government has announced its intention to build a monument honoring the Baron in Olympia. The important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle, right? Aircraft production. The aircraft industry exploded during the Valkyrie, and the government has made sure to generously subsidize it to facilitate its implementation in Algeria. Since then, preparations for the next war have not stopped, since, especially since colonial conflicts have given us the opportunity to test our aircrafts. With war finally on the horizon, we will mobilize the industry to its fullest, and Air Coordination Center. We will create a dedicated command center for our Air Force, so that they are best assigned according to their strengths and weaknesses, instead of letting them be potentially misused by commanders with less experience of air tactics, and ensure that the status of our forces in the air be monitored and controlled as best as possible, for example, to amount to rescue missions. King Edward Tours, a legionary order of France, speaking to a small and listless crowd in the capital, King Edward VIII commended. The French contribution to the Entente kicked off a three-month uh, tour of the country. King Edward is expected to meet with officials and dignitaries throughout the legionary order of France, with at least one planned parade, or parade planned to be held in his honor in Constantine. Considering the king's meager popularity, attendance is not expected to be very high, though there are still those who eagerly anticipate uh, the king's presence, and French military leaders are eager to consult the king's attaches regarding Entente coordination. We welcome, of course, His Majesty. But the Entente is just now watching as Germany is now trying to kill off the French. So we'll see what happens. I don't mind. Ooh. Oh, it'd be at peace. We're not at peace. We gotta wait for these guys to die first. I was gonna send volunteers, but whatever. Other guys are still doing a hefty amount of damage. Oh, IEDC stuff, that's fine. Whatever. Um, this is going to take a lot of time for these guys to kill them off. They'll die eventually, I'm not concerned. I mean, we have more than enough political power now uh, to do whatever we really want. As we're doing all this stuff here. DCA network. If any Air Force from attacking us on our own soil, particularly in Corsica, so close to the Red Main, then we'll develop a network of anti-aircraft artillery batteries and searchlights. Highly coordinated by the Ministry of the Air. Aircraft production, which we read. Long-range fighter. Corsica might be a flood, floating airfield from which our planes can easily reach the mainland, but we'll nevertheless need fighters capable of patrolling the vast expanses of the Mediterranean, as well as escort our bombers into red, deep into red territory to destroy the communist industry. The mystery will ensure that the development of heavy fighters is not neglected. Tactical bombers. Our military thinkers, well, uh, have realized the importance of coordinated airline efforts with 
with infantry heavily supported by air tactical units against the defensive structures, enemy personnel, or infrastructure. In implement these tactics, the Ministry of Air will support the development of tactical bombers. Uh, an African Toulon. Toulon was a primary base of the Mediterranean fleet before the war, but since exile has been stationed on Lake Bizerta, a large laguna in northern Tunisia extensively, intensively developed by the colonial authorities, with in particular a large arsenal and ferryville. To meet our ambitions, Bizerta will be overhauled and developed further, preparing a return. To reconquer the metropole, we need to land on its shore, a fight that the commune is expecting for two, de two densities or two decades. If it would be anything but simple, we must prepare as much as we can, as there will be no second chance. The ministry will invest in the development of anything that could help our amphibious At this point, we've gone ahead and gone to war. Now, not saying that we can actually naval invade, because, well, let's just say I try this off screen a little bit, and they do have a crap ton of divisions on the border. So, yeah, that's fine. We can get a non aggression pact as well for now. Um, we, oh, and of course, we're reclaiming, we're going to try to reclaim Europe. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, our divisions are just not thick enough to really have enough of a punch to get in there. Um, we'll see, though. The goal is to delete, hopefully, the enemy's navy and whatnot. Uh, what do they want right now? Uh, no, we're okay. We can't really do anything there anyway, so there's no point even trying for that one. Um, or artillery would be very nice. Hello. They got some task forces. Well, that's not good. We got some casts. But we need more planes. We need more output. It's 1940. And we need these naval bombers done ASAP. And we'll get the carriers for them too. 1940s, 40s, 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 1. Alright, over here. Because we are trying to have some fighters here, which is nice. We definitely need way more fuel though. Holy crap. Um, hey, German Empire. There's someone else. Grab that. We're going to cut, cut ourselves way down a building, but we just need the fuel, man. Ooh, some subs been sunk. That's nice, nice, nice. Good. Oh boy. Go get some of that right there too. And better naval bombers, just please. Yes. Oh boy. Oh boy. What's going on here? Oh, we're death stacking. We have a carrier penalty. Oh, we sunk the carrier though. Oh, that's good. Oh, the death stacking just—it's so easy to do. That's what the AI does a whole bunch. Oh my goodness, we lost four planes versus five escort cruisers. 15 destroyers, a pride of the fleet carrier, and a couple planes too. Now that's pretty darn freaking awesome. I'll go and get the two. Anyways, how's our fleet looking? What, level three, not bad, not bad. We do have a carrier here, which does help out a lot. Go and repair. We don't have a lot of dockyards, but go and repair. Notre Dame de Atlas. A new RB has been found in the heights of Atlas Mountains. We're looking in the outskirts of the village of to Pirin, meaning gardens in Berber, Our Lady of the Atlas was founded by the French Trappist monks hoping to teach modern agricultural techniques to the indigenous. They've already gone to work planting vines and vegetables, implementing beehives as well as organizing more efficiently the harvest of the thousands of fruit trees on their stables or their sizable property. Though still small, the community hopes to attract more members uh, seeking a life of work, prayer, and service to the natives with whom relations have so far been peaceful. Far from being the only monastic community in a, small, in a similar situation. Catholic media and hierarchy have nonetheless praised the latest example of religious coexistence, while the others see the Abbey as a shining example of the civilizing mission of France and her colonies. However, some have expressed worry. The community is far from the centers of colonial life, and most importantly, their garrisons. But the monks have assured that they have nothing to fear from their neighbors, and they are in any case under protection of the Virgin Mary, to whom they have erected a great statue overlooking the valley. Christians, Muslims, we are all sons and daughters of the Most High. You know what we could really use? Radar here. That would definitely helps out a whole bunch. Oh, that's a fucking sub. Uh... Uh, did I already choose this? Did I not choose this already? Did I buy something else with this? Huh. We are trying to make some medium tanks as well, too, so. We don't have enough industry. Sink, sink, sink everything they got. Yeah, I, but, like, I, I really want us to, uh, enabling people, as you even see here. They have quite a few divisions, which sucks. Let these guys kill each other off a whole bunch first. They have so much PP, which is nice. Alright, so we got all this done, which is great. <clears throat> Prepare our turn. There's a lot of stuff we can do here later. Tactical bombers. We read these, this one earlier, and as well as tactical bombers. Dem Barrage. Transmitting knowledge. It's not bad, too. New air tactics. Air superiority. Ooh, ground attack. I like that, too. Um, nothing here navally, I think, will prepare us for too much. So, fleet coordination. That's not bad. I like that as well. I think what we're, because everything else is mostly done. This would be, wouldn't be bad to do, but. Now we could use that fuel, though. Oh, good God. 
Um, and a de affecting resistance mechanic. Well, I do want to get down here, though. That's be really good as well. Long range fighter, bring this game, please go ahead, so. And you know what? Tactical bombers, transmitting knowledge. France is a proud history in aeronautics. And the Valkyrie produced many heroes of the air, but you can't learn to fly on the ground, and the pilots are a rare commodity. We should our best aces even become better instructors and teach a younger generation how to excel and how to exceed them. DEM Barrage. According to offensive and defensive efforts in the air, the Ministry will generalize the use of electromagnetic detection. Immense antennas placed in strategic points using electromagnetic waves to detect aircrafts. And new air tactics. The field of military aviation is rapidly changing when our pilots must adapt their skills to ever-changing technology. With new aircrafts come, new possibilities of offensive and defensive maneuvers. New ways of coming out in a tense dogfight. Extensive training in these new tactical advances will give it an edge over our enemies. It's very true. I was kind of surprised that we did not have the Civil War in Spain. We just completely ignored it. Sink all the convoys. Sink as everything you possibly can. Because right now they're losing a lot to the Germans. So. The more convoys we can blow up, the better. Also, these guys are at full capacity right now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Just keep sinking everything they got. Because we can naval invade, and I'm sure that's not going to be a huge problem. But, like, actually keeping a port is... That's a, that's a problem. Um, Because I want to use more tanks and whatnot, but trying to just invade the mainland is going to be, like, possible. So we got all that over there. Preparing a return to do that again, please go ahead. Invasion logistics. However, then, Fifth Assault is merely the first part. We must ensure that our troops can assure... Uh, lasting bridgehead. And for this, there's only one way to prepare impeccable logistics, and so that the men are lucky enough to be on the first to set foot on the sacred soil of the Patri. Could pack any counterattack the communards might attempt. Develop forces, Swiss Marines. The commune lacks many resources essential to the modern warfare effort, and most importantly, oil. Keeping control of the Mediterranean will be a strong step towards isolating them from the allies and neutral states willing to trade with them, but a large fleet of subs will give us the capacity to harass enemy convoys even more efficiently. Good. Build it, build it, build it, build it, build it. Build it. it gets way more knowledge of air and sea. Or I guess ocean. Or no, no, it's Mediterranean Sea. What am I thinking? Nice. It's fine. Let them just butcher each other on the fields here. Because how how is uh, this looking? Ooh, yes. Ooh, Unibrain's not. Ooh, they're doing really well against those guys. Are missing light tanks and medium tanks. Did we just make another. Yep, we did. Yep. Called it. Nice. Hello. Nice. Hello. What is this? Oh, crap. Liberia, huh? How many divisions does Liberia even have? 4 to 14. Ooh, we might need more divisions than that. We'll see. 5 divisions might be enough. We'll see. 2 subs have been are gone. Nice. Nice. I don't want to get involved in Asia or South America, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're doing that too, which is nice. 19, 40. Yes. Nice. Good stuff. Oh, we can help invade here too, actually. Liberia demands Sierra Leone. Liberia is the long desire of the state of Sierra Leone, has seen them as kind of a brother nation founded by slaves who were sent back to Africa from Canada, Britain, and other old Anglo Empire nations. Now they've issued the French colonial government an old maiden. Either between these rightfully African lands or them, or there'll be war. Outraged. Let them have it? No, God no. What do we have? Le Few. These past few weeks, something strange has been happening in Algeria, or Algiers. A man calling himself Francois Henri Pormette, after organizing a political and mystical gatherings, attracting a growing number of curious onlookers, with some even turning into believing or into believers in the strange creed of this fire of Prometheus. The man desires or declares he is the master of a political movement called Le Few, or the Fire, the new man, who has come to restore hope in the hearts of all Frenchmen. From a stage adorned, and banners featuring the party cult symbols of Phoenix, a wheel and a thunder, he leads the ever growing cult around him a repetitive chant such as through our fire shall be reborn, her faith will be perpetual, her genius will shine, France will be eternal. Since man's political platform seemingly does not go into more depth than these charismatic of deranged riots, nothing was done at first sight by the authorities, and as the crowds grew, however, a cursory investigation was initiated by intelligence services. Shockingly, they found that this Francois-Henri Promette has never existed and is merely the pseudonym of Maurice Delauny, a farmer from Normandy who, after brilliant studies at the National Institute for Horticulture and a brief stint in politics, has seemingly lost his mind. But worrying, however, is important funding the man receives uh, from unknown sources. Some within the Bureau suspect communist influence. What should be done? Long the master of France will be eternal. I mean, let them have his little fun. Why not still mental asylum? We'll wait as long as we possibly can right now. So we can get over there. Long range fighter, nice. Cancel only, so be it. Uh, I like radar. I like radar a lot, actually. Oh, you're almost down there. Nice. Nice. 
Nice. Ooh, they do have an ambulance though. Hey, not bad. Doesn't fit looking level 3 still. Retrio Revolt, which is fine with us. We don't really care. Sure. Sure, guys. We need more tanks? Yeah. Come support us. Come attack us. Come on. We dare you. So that's not bad, but in there we got the radar, which is very good. Let's get some radar down here too. Oh boy, do we have naval bombers down here? We need naval bombers. Carrier naval bombers. Oh god, it's not a good thing to see. Hello. Northern. Oh, Northern. Oh. Whoa. Oh, hello. Well, we, I'm sure we're not done that much damage. Yeah. Are you guys going to go to war with us or what? Or just go to war with them. We've got allies. Stack bombers? Might as well. A new recruit in the Foreign Legion. Disca Today, a distinguishing young man walked into the Legion Altran, a recruitment office not far from the Moroccan border. A strange set for the officer in charge, possessing his obligation, more used to foreign men of dubious past, willing to serve and die for France for a chance at a new life. He gave Henri Robert Orliac as his name, and the officer did not care if that was the truth. Like so many others in these bellicose days, Orliac was then in integrated in the troop, once in a simple recruit uniform, only somewhat standing out from his peers. Truth is, Henri was not an ordinary recruit. His neo-name was Henri d'Orléans, a royal prince of the House of France. In the Great War, his father had too attempted to join the Foreign Legion, but was denied it due to the law of exile barring representatives from the foreigning, uh, former reigning houses from sitting foot in France. But young Henri, eager to serve France in his great crusade against socialism, cannot be deterred from doing his duty. One day, perhaps, the prince will be called to rule over the nation, but for now, will serve the nation in other ways. Shh, it's a secret after all. Nice. Good. Pepe Lamoco. Pepe Lamoco, a melodrama starring rising actor Jean Gabin and already the famous Mireille Baillin, has quickly found success at home and even abroad, set in Algiers, particularly in the labyrinthic and exotic town of Caspa. The movie tells the story of Pepe, played by Gabin, a former big shot in the Parisian underworld now in hiding, and the men trying to catch him, both law enforcement and syndicalist agents looking down, looking to put down, once and for all, a major organized little black market within the commune. Settling in comfortable exile, rebuilding a criminal empire, the gangster is soon thrown off balance by the arrival of Gabby, played by Balin, mistress of a prominent businessman looking to slum it among natives and immigrants, and the sensual and dangerous role of the Caspa. The two strike up a relationship, igniting the jealousy of Pepe's mistress. This love triangle is followed with great interest by the police, who use the two women to slowly push the gangster to more, take more and more risks and eventually leave hiding. Surrounded, knowing his doom is a matter of time, facing an eternity in prison or assassination by red agents, Pepe instead decides to go out on his terms, committing suicide as he spots Gabby in the distance. <clears throat> A gripping suspenseful tale of love and treason. With its tear tricking ending, shot entirely on location, it's hardly surprising that the movie has found such tremendous success. Some seeing it as uh, <clears throat> an instant classic, and Pepe, quintessential anti hero, criminal but principal, has become a bit of a youth icon as many identify with the situation at the crossroads of two worlds, French and native, as well as his melancholic longing for Paris. That Gabin? Gabin should go far. Ah, carrier naval bombers, too. That'd be good. We need more extraction too. Um, that's too good. Um, more radar would be nice. A lot of time. Uh, uh, get some fuel. Let's do it. Very surprised they haven't gone to war with us yet. What is this? On town commission for the governors of Panama? Nah, we good, man. We good. We chilling. We might want to help out uh, these guys here, actually. We we might just enable invade the destruction first. If we can take out these guys and then go through here, like we can claim system for ourselves, that'd be really good. Take out one of these neighbors. Yeah, that actually might be the, that might be the plan. One, two, three. Obviously, we want to use tanks, but using tanks in this situation it would be very smart because the hills and mountains is very tough to use. Palermo. We'll see. Oh God. All right, so they got a couple battleships. No carriers, no planes. That's why you always have to have some sort of support planes. Even land-based ones are fine. Oh, come on, don't let them escape, man. Bro, 
That's really good. We lost 11 planes, but I lost 10 destroyers, 2 escort cruisers, and a battleship. Nice. Very nice. Any upgrades yet? Nope. Bro, when are you going to learn? Still so only level 3, huh? Nice. They don't want to go into that area a little bit. I'm not sure. That's fine, guys. Yes. <coughs> yeah, spot's gonna suck down here. It's all right. Ah, so let's go and save real quick and see what happens. I was wanting to go and just invade mainland France, but if we have a little detour to Liberia, things happen, you know. Can you guys actually do anything here? Oh, are you? Oh, are you actually? No, that's that's not us. That's someone else trying to maybe invade. Okay then. Well, we'll see what we can do down there. But they wanted to go to war with us. What do you want? It's literally what you wanted. Yeah, not bad too. Ah, we have our spirit right there too. Oh wait, we have 19 more ships? Oh no, that's just, oh no, 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 that's just up there. Well, you can take a Palermo, keep them busy, invade down there, that'd be great too. Don't get me wrong. Oh man, we need more. Oh, oh, we got Liberia. Nice, I love Liberia. If that's the case, look up at Algiers. There you go. Two divisions kind of sucks. Kind of want to force it to see what happens, but maintenance company two would be nice. Um, better military police just in case. A traitor. Uh, Enter Adazam, a monthly academic magazine dedicated to Islamic studies, has enjoyed a well deserved success even among the relatively mainstream audience, at least for this kind of publication. Our current exiles have many, particularly academics and clergymen, to seek a better understanding of the faith of so many of our countrymen. Some out of genuine interest or hope of interfaith dialogue, while others dream of a large scale conversion of the indigenous to Christianity. A recent open letter published anonymously in Enter Adazam, threatening the fragile relations uh, equilibrium, however. The letter calling for the formation of a Friday prayer league for the conversion of the Muslims and to pray for the strange brothers was well received within the Catholic circles and would likely not reach Muslim audiences if not for the identity of its author leaked to the wider press in the following days. Father Jean Mohammed Ben Abjil, male was recently ordained to the priest, had become a professor at the Catholic Institute of Algiers last year, and yet ten years ago he was at his first Muslim student. Come from a prominent Moroccan family, brilliant youth, fervent in his faith, he came under the protection of the Marshal Yuate, who encouraged him to further studies in Algiers. There he met fame or. Orientalist Louis Massignon and Catholic philosopher Jacques Maritain. He has joined, joined hoping to study the enemy, but a year later he was to convert and join the Franciscan order. This high profile conversion had largely been swept under the rug due to the fears of unrest, apostasy, being a particularly severe act in Islam, such fears have been confirmed. The letter translated and mistranslated was widely shared in mosques and madrasas, and overwhelmingly received with contempt, if not anger, with that th even threats being directed towards Father Jean Mohammed, who has gone into hiding. Not a good day for dialogue. Also, I'll be honest, I'm going to do a lot of off screen, or at least show you on a time lapse, so. Um, if there's anything that pops up, anything like like cultural events and whatnot, I will try to leave it on screen for at least one second because it's going to take some time. But we'll read about these too. Um, the German takeover of Morocco has left our west, our remaining West African colonies, largely cut off from Algiers by the Sahara. It's caused an inefficient administration. And if we are to ever invade it, it would lead to a severe supply issues for our soldiers, particularly if we can no longer safely safely travel around the coast. As such, we must begin the construction of a new desert railway across the desert. Yeah. Colonial extraction. Our colonies contain a vast amount of natural wealth, which has so far gone largely untapped. <clears throat> How we need trade investment more than ever, and such as now, it's vital that we look to developing and extracting these valuable resources, the extent of conscription. For the years, the government has shied away from the question of how far we should go in conscripting natives for the military service. Hesitant to alter the status quo in either direction to avoid controversy, however, the hour of liberation is fast approaching, and many would like to see the matter settle for good. Which you can't do this one, or this one, but renewed crackdown. Well, look at that. <coughs> Way less growth, 
uh, compliance growth and resistance. Oh God! The threat posed the colonial empire, the only land that the true French government has loved, is now behind to great to ignore. Seditious so individuals from across the political spectrum, both native and French, routinely call for reforms to colonial rule, but it's quite the opposite that we need. New waves of arrest and the establishment of a form formal colonial secret police will eliminate threats to continued domination. We can't do this one. Well, actually, technically we could if we really wanted to, but I like that. But research French rule. Uh, now that the social government resides once more in the metropole, many colonials feel even more cut off from power than before and are pressing for greater independence. While the relocation of central administration is less than our ability to keep independence movement suppressed, the only remedy to this is to authorize new crackdowns against native organizations or nationalist groups and send more ships to reinforce colonial garrisons. But unfortunately, that's where we got to end it for today. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll do our best to invade and continue invading Pelerin mode. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.